God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me again. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is your brother in Christ, Euclid Gray. I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. I am so excited to be before you in your homes, in your living rooms, wherever you are watching. May the Holy Spirit be there with you. May the power of God's love abide in that atmosphere as we together <clears throat> expect to hear from God. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, if it had not been you on our side, where would we be, God? Father, in essence, we love you. We thank you, Father, for always being there. Father, never leaving us, neither forsaking us, God. Father, we ask, Lord, that you forgive us for things we said, done, and thought about that may have perhaps grieved the Holy Spirit. We ask, Father, Lord, that you meet the individual that's watching, wherever they're standing in the need of you, God, whether it be in their health, whether it be in their finances, whether it be in their mind. Father, we ask, God, that you be a present help in the time of need for such a time is this. Now, Father, we say thank you, God. We make our petitions and our requests made known to you with thankful hearts, God, thanking you, Father, in advance, knowing that you already have heard our prayers, God, even in the midst of praying it. Father, whatever we stand in need for, you said in your word, we, you know what we stand in need of before we even ask. So therefore, even before this prayer, and you're already working it out on our behalf for our good. So, Father, that's why we have thankful hearts when we make our petitions and our re requests be made known to you, Father, because we know before we even ask, you're already working it out for our good. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for being a present help in the time of need. All of you, God, humbly I ask, Holy Spirit, we welcome you in, around, saturate this atmosphere, remove all wicked, remove, remove all guile, remove all hypocrisy. Let your spirit manifest totally through me, God, for your glory that we all may hear what the spirit has to say to the church. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. I love you. Listen, last time I was here by the grace of God, God was sharing, I was sharing with you um, about this experience um, that God, um, I believe, put on my heart to share with you. You know, and it was about the critter, you know, talking about how, you know, the enemy, he comes in to steal, kill, and destroy, comes in to try to debeautify us, so to speak, uh, try to take the glory of God uh, from amongst us and pollute our minds with worrying and doubt and things of that nature that will cause us to stagnate the blessing or the move of God in our life for his glory. And, you know, and I, and I, I used an example of a critter being in an establishment <clears throat> I was in. This critter came in and we was trying to get the critter out and we had um, exterminators and things of that nature to come in and get the thing out. But unfortunately, <laughs> I was told that the um, exterminator or the pest control person patched the hole and the critter was still inside. So that drove me to think about, man, you know, I was just thinking, I'm like, wow, it's interesting. You would think um, the individual would perhaps um, lead the critter out. Then once the critter is out, you know, patch up the hole. But hey, hey, I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> but I got something from it. And I was like, how, it's one thing to clean out the outside. It's, it's one thing to, you know, stop, um, say, say the, the, the cursing. Or it's one thing to stop the lust. Or it's one thing to stop the sin. But what happens when the sin um, that is inwardly, that calls outward, um, um, disruptions or outward um, outbursts um, to, to manifest, how can you clean the inside of a, a person's heart? You know, and, and, and God was um, sharing um, revelation in his word. He said, pray without cease. That's how we clean the inner. When we always um, 
focus on God rather than the situation at hand that's problem uh, uh, problematic. Like say for instance, when that critic came in, it took the focus um, off the peace and the serenity of you know being still. Well, God say, be still and know that I'm God. And when we in that place, you know, the enemy try to throw in a curveball, so to speak, like that critter came in and, and, it, and, it, and it detours your focus. Now the focus is on the problem rather than the problem solver. And God is saying, no, keep your mind stayed on me so you can have perfect peace so our peace can be perfected so as um god was you know sharing that with me as i was sharing with you to encourage one another in the lord um i i i, I you know i kind of ran out of time and i want to elaborate and dive back in that if if i may um so listen not just only should we just pray without cease which keeps our mind stayed on christ the bible also says some things um, you know, that comes in and it's hard to get out. You know, like the Bible talks about spirits that has been cast out. And once they cast out, they go to, um, you know, out of darkness and things of that nature. Then they, they look for a place to find. Then when they don't find a place to go inhabit them, them, them evil spirits or, or conduct or, or evil traits and things of that nature, they come back to the place or the person that have been delivered or so to speak, or, or have been uh, the, where the place have been swept clean. In, in, in the Bible document, it comes back with, with demonic spirits even seven times stronger than them to inhabit the place that they was cast out of. You know what I mean? It's like they go back and get some help. Like, you know what? Since they cast us, cast me out, I'm going to go back to that place where I was cast out. You know, these evil spirits, you know, uh, I can just assume, you know, it's, it's having this type of, this, this, this type of, you know, uh, setting of mindset. And because the Bible said they go away and, 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 and when they can't find nowhere to inhabit, they go get, um, demons seven times stronger and go back to the place. And then the person that was in, um, in, infected with these spirits or infused with these evil spirits is now worse than they was before. Isn't that interesting? So what we have to do, we have to continue to keep that that place occupied with the power and the Holy Spirit and the, and, and the focus of God. That's why the Bible say pray without cease. That's how you keep um, the critter out, so to speak. That's how you get the evil spirits out. See, if the spirits had it came back trying to infiltrate and try to fill that place again with stronger demons, it would have found that the spirit of the person was um, focused on God and always was in prayer. You know, even even the Bible talking about you can't, uh, you know, the enemy, <clears throat> he, he comes to bind up the strong man. And if the strong man is bind up, then he comes in and, and, and take over the, the whole family, the whole household. But just like, you know, but 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 if, if the strong man had been at watch, of the enemy, he wouldn't have been um, easily, um, you know, deceived. He wouldn't have been um, tricked, you know. So we have to always watch and pray and pray without cease. So just like that, that strong man, you know, that's that's guarding and, and, and it's like that watchman, you know, we have to always be alert because the enemy is always, he's like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. So we have to always be watchful and prayerful at all times and guard our heart with diligence. You know, we have to guard our heart like the word of God says, put on the whole armor of God. And, it's, and it takes a daily process to do that. That's why it takes us to meditate on the word day and night, not just in the morning, day and night, because you don't know when that slew foot enemy may come in and sneak his, with his, his slithery way back in your mindset or back in a character or back in an old habit that was once cast out. You know, you probably said, you know what? I said yes to God and no to the devil. And the devil got mad. And you know, and the evil spirit got mad because he got cast out. You, re you resisted it and, and you ignored it and it fleed from you. 
So you didn't you didn't practice um, the the sexual activity that you used to do. You didn't smoke drugs uh, or drink alcohol. You stopped doing that. You you done away with that. So you separated yourself and you chose to say yes to God and no to the evil that the enemy will have you to do to keep you, um, you know, uh, in in this this prison type mentality where where the evil is like that critter inside of your soulless realm that's called causing you to be polluted. But now you have cast that thing out. Now that thing is coming back, trying to see how you can be deceived again. See, the Bible said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. All else is sin. You know, a lot of times people think it's just yes to people or yes to uh, or no to people or yes to situations or yes to things. No, yes to God, no to evil. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Because the Bible says, I'd rather you be hot, meaning be hot for the Lord. That is your yes. Rather than being cold for the Lord, which is your no and rejection of God. You know, he said he don't want to return when you're in the season of cold in your no season. He wants to uh, return when you're in, in that yes season where you're you're focusing on God. And your focus is not detoured by critters and evil habits and evil spirits that try to infiltrate and, 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 and dwell in your soulless realm. So, hallelujah. We have to be mindful to keep our minds stayed on Jesus. Now, now I want us to go to the word of God because it's another thing. Yes, we pray without cease, but the Bible also talks about the, these evil, strong spirits that perhaps have come back. It, it may have came back to you. You're like, man, I thought I, I, I stopped smoking, but now I used to smoke uh, cigarettes. Now you end up smoking weed and, and now we turn to, to other strong, you know, Drugs and you're like, what happened? Or oh, I said no to this situation, and but then the situation came back with a, a more a bigger opportunity, and now I end up saying yes. And the Bible said, double-minded person is not stable in none of their ways. You can't doubt God. You have to be have this surety that God will provide for you, and we have to walk by faith and not by sight. So when we say no to the enemy. And yes to God, that enemy will come back and try to trick us. And sometimes he used things that appear to be a good thing, but it's really a evil thing. So, so we have to be mindful. We have to have a spirit of discernment. We have to, when we, we're in the presence of God and we always seeking him and we diligently um, seeking him and he rewards us with revelation and knowledge and, and he reward us with this discipline um, um, attitude. Now we start we start saying, you know what? I don't want to go back in my evil way. So, so God will will give us um, um, things to do to keep us from being distracted or being um, filled with those evil spirits that try to, you know, get us away from God and sway us to be double minded. And the, because the enemy know it, the person that's double minded is unstable. And he say, if I can just get him unstable, I can knock him off the, you know. But 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 we have to stay on that solid rock of Jesus Christ. You know, so so when the enemy do come, you know, uh, and, and, and try to become like a flood and like storms, you know, where we can be on that solid rock of Jesus Christ. And the Bible say um, when he built, I build my church upon this rock and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. So even though the gates of hell try to prevail against it, because we are on the rock of Christ and we're standing on his words and we're, we're exercising his, his, his principles. By, by not just speaking it, but living it and exercising and doing what God's word says, then he will reward us and, and he will give us power to withstand the evil temptations of the enemy. Now, let's go to Matthew 17, 21, because it's, it's, this is powerful because it talks about, you know, um, uh, 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 somebody that was uh, filled with. Um, evil spirits and and, and, and and perhaps they couldn't get the evil spirits out and, and Jesus was letting know these kind of spirits it requires something and it says Matthew 17 21 it says how be it this kind goeth out but by prayer and fasting again it says how be it this kind goeth out but by prayer and fasting meaning Sometimes it takes discipline. See, 
when you are fasting and praying, now you're focused on God. So you can't be deceived by the enemy. You know, the Bible said, you know, if you are glutton and, and you're and, and which is a sinful nature and you're always me, me, me and, and always um, concerned about yourself rather than other people. The Bible said think highly of others rather than yourself. So somebody always trying to, you know, tell you. You need to worry about you. Don't worry about nobody else. Focus on yourself. Don't get me wrong. The Bible says love thyself, um, love thy neighbors as thyself. Of course, love thyself. But the Bible says don't idle thyself. Don't operate in pride. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. You don't lift yourself up. We don't lift ourselves up, especially in front of others to put them down. Oh, no, no, no. That's a trick of the enemy. That's pride. And before, if you operate and we operate like that, the only thing that we're going to expect is a fall. So if you're if you, 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 you are tired of falling, it takes a humble posture. So when, when the Bible says this type um, goes out, those critters or those spiritual things, if you feel like it's more um, harder for you to cope with, um, the situation, because it seems like the situation has taken over or have gotten stronger because you allow the, a, a door to open, let's humble ourselves and do what the word of God says. The Bible says if you're glutton and you go to a king's um, table and, and you eat and you're, and you're eating real fast and you're being greedy and you just just consuming so much, he said you might as well put a knife to your neck. In essence, because... When you're doing, you're focusing on yourself. You're not being humble. The Bible wants us to fast and pray because when we fast, we focus on the Lord. So when the enemy try to bring things that look delicious and scrumptious, you know, before our eyes, we won't be deceived and be detoured. We have to, because that can open up the door and bring that critter of character of demonic forces back in and lure us away from God. That's why we cannot be anxious for nothing. So when we pray, imagine if somebody um, unfortunately was trying to do some harm to you, and, and but if you but you was in the presence of God and you had discernment, and God was saying, you know, I want you to eat just vegetables. I just want you to eat a certain things. I just want you to drink water, what have you. And and you didn't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. So when a person try to trick you and invite you, and it seemed like they're trying to do something of substance to 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 lure you um to 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 appease your appetite you 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 say no thank you i appreciate it but and you don't be so in a of a gluttony mentality so cuz when you have that gluttony mentality you're blind and you can't see in the spirit realm god wants us to be um have foresight he wants us to be seated in heavenly High, in heavenly places so we won't be deceived by the works and the wickedness of the enemy. So to do that, we have to fast. This is how we keep the door closed so the critter will not come in. So not just prayer alone, but it sometimes it also takes prayer and fasting. Now, now, now you may be thinking, well, how can the enemy come in? Hypothetically, say for instance, you say, you know what? I tried this job. I tried this opportunity. I tried this and it's saying like, but God is telling me to do this. He's maybe calling you to be an entrepreneur. And you say, okay, well, all right, Lord, I'm going to do it. And you have this, this faith and you, and you, you take one step, then God take two. Then you take another step, then God take another one. You know, he, he, he turned your two to four. He turned your four to eight and you know, it's God and your, and your faith is increasing. Then the enemy is mad. He said, wait a minute. Now, the opportunity of this job that was closed um, in your face, you didn't get discouraged. In fact, it made you get on your knees and you sought the Lord and God gave you an idea, a, a, a witty invention. He gave you an idea. Now you're operating that entrepreneurship. And next thing you know, now the phone ring calling. Oh, yeah, you know what? I got an opportunity for you. And, uh, and you're like, oh, uh, well, I need the money and this and that. But God, but God is saying, wait a minute, I'm blessing you. Where is your faith? You know, and, 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 and you're looking at the waves and the bills and the things of that nature. And you, and you, and you, and you trying to operate now by sight rather than faith. Now you sit up there and take that opportunity. And next thing you know, now your God divine assignment has withered and start 
um, you know, uh, withering away. And now you're now now you're back in the rut, and you're wondering why you're not pleased and why you're not satisfied because you was in this position position of posture of putting your trust in the Lord and God was blessing the work of your hands and you was asking God you say Lord this thing this task is too incredibly too big for me if you don't do it it can't be done so it needed God to be a part of it so it could be fulfilled and when you saw God fulfilling things and bringing things together it brought you closer to God and y'all had this sense of relationship and the enemy didn't like that so opportunity came so we have to have discernment. Every opportunity that appear to be good may not be a God opportunity. Hallelujah. So we have to be careful to um, ask God to give us the, the discernment to discern good from evil. You know, so I just want to slow down and just let you know, let's continue to, in, uh, to, to, to keep that door closed. You know, keep that door sealed with the Holy Spirit. What door? That door that the enemy tried to wither himself in. The Bible says don't even give him a foot, uh, foot, foothold, uh, you know. So if, what's a foothold? You know how you had a door open and the door's about to close and the enemy say, oh, man, that door closing. He had put his foot in the door. You, you know what I'm saying? People put their foot in the door. I remember, you know, it's interesting about this pandemic. I really believe God was teaching us and telling us and showing us something when we went through that experience. A lot of people was gathering around their families again. There were a lot of people, um, you know, went in the building of the uh, sanctuary, but they was in the presence of God. When fear came, they got on their knees. They got into a, a posture. People got sick. They started praying. They got closer to God. You know, so this sick was not unto death to a lot of people, and, and, and it got them um, close to God, and, and, they, and, and they was done with their old ways, and they said, I'm going to start a new way. I, I want to do it God's way. Lord, order my steps, and, and, and they had this new revelation. Then all of a sudden, things start opening up again. Then it's like, oh, oh, the store's opening. The church is opening. Everything's open. Then it's like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. where's your walk with God? Remember that that time you, 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 you committed your life to the Lord? You said you're going to close the door on your selfishness and, and close the door to your fear. And you're going to operate in faith and trust God because God has sustained your health and gave you a new level of revelation of seeing who he is for yourself. Not because how people told you who he was when it comes to their testimonies. But he gave you your own personal testimony. And here it is. That door is open now. And we have to keep that door closed. It's interesting. Right around that season, um, when, when the pandemic was kind of lifting and everybody started, you know, going about their own ways again, um, it's a song came out. And there's no disrespect to the song, secular song. It was like, I'm going to leave the door open. And it's like, whoa. And this song blew up real fast. And it was almost like, you know, even though it's a beautiful instrumentation, beautiful uh, um, artists and everything, not said no disrespect to artists or anything. I'm just using this for a point as an example. The enemy would try to use anything, even though it sounds beautiful. But he'd say, you know what? I'm going to leave that door open. No, if, if God closed that door to that adulterous relationship, leave it closed. If God closed that door to that manipulating, deceiving opportunity that's not of God to, that to try to get you away from God, you have to close that door. Because I'm going to tell you, the enemy tried to do the same thing to Jesus when he was fasting. The enemy had the audacity to say, if, um, it is written, do this and do that and do that. And then, 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 you know, and every time Jesus said no to the enemy and yes to his father, the enemy came stronger and stronger. Then he said, forget it. Tell you what, man, if you bow down, I give you all this. All this was given to me. I have access to all this. If you bow down, I give you all this. And Jesus said, uh-uh, brother, kick rocks. I bow down to no man. I serve God and God alone is whom I serve. He said, get thee behind me. He had to put him in his proper place. He closed the door from that silly opportunity that tried to deceive him. You have to know you are blessed and highly favored, chose by God, strategically 
placed on this earth for such a time as this to be used by God. Why should we trade our relationship and lose our oil by opening up a door to evil that will cause us to be away from God? God wants us to continue to close the door to evil, but open up our hearts to God and let the Holy Spirit come in and have his way. Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage you, you know, as we um, continue to keep those critters out and those enemies that try to come in and detour us to be um, more worldly or more demonic or things that's not of God or ungodly, we have to close the door to that. Close the door to gossip. Close the door to lying. Close the door to cheating. Close the door, but open your heart to the Lord so God can come in and clean out the wicked, deceitful things that's in your heart that the world have placed in there that's cluttered. So we have to have our heart detoxed. You know, like you have a cleansing and, and people take um, the, this medicine to cleanse their bowels and, and, and because they had so much glutton and ate food from their eyes or they uh, or ate food from connected to stress or ate food from connected to grief and things of that nature, as opposed to humbling ourselves and being obedient and eating or stop eating um, flesh food, but rather eat spiritual food by obeying God. That's how we fast. That's how we clean out our temple. That's how we clean out the wickedness from our heart. That's how we humble ourselves. That's how we are blessed by the Almighty. So I just want to encourage you, you know, um, let's let's go to, um, uh, I'm, I'm, let's go to Revelations. It says, so because you are lukewarm, this um revelation is um three sixteen. A lot of times we look at three sixteen three sixteen and, and it's a beautiful thing. You know, we all know that. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. You know, we 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 know that one. But let's let's I'm I'm gonna introduce you to another three sixteen, okay? Some some that we 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 have to be careful. We cannot be lukewarm, we can't be wishy-washy, we have to be hot. For God, we have to put our yes to the Lord, you know, and our no to evil, our no to Satan. We can't be lukewarm or he will spit us right out. It does not surprise me that we went through this pandemic. Everybody was boom, spitting always. The phlegm is on the, on, the, on the vocal cords and everybody had to spit. It's almost like God was saying, listen, I'm trying to give y'all an opportunity to get it together, to eliminate the lukewarmness. And I need you to beautify yourself. By, 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 by carrying the, the gospel of peace, the gospel of salvation. You know, he said, beautiful are the feet of those who go to the mountains and, 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 and distribute and, and carry out the, the good news of, of peace. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to have peace when you're going through so much turmoil and stress and worry and doubt. God want to eliminate all that and give us peace that passes all understanding. And the only way we can do that is be sure about our yes. Do not be lukewarm. God is saying, see how y'all spitting? See, see how everybody's spitting? You know, you open up the car door, you see spit on there. You go to the bathrooms and the restaurant, spit, just spit, spit. And it's like all this cold and this phlegm and everything. He say, well, listen, if you want to be hot and you want to be blessed, I need you to eliminate the pollution that's causing so many germs, so many toxicity, to toxic waste and toxic um, toxicity in your body. He say, I want to give you a cleansing. God want to cleanse you, you know, just like water cleanse you. It's nothing to 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 supple, supplement water. It's nothing to, to replace water. It's a lot of things that look like water, you know, but it's not water, but it's only one water. Jesus say, I am the living water. If you drink of me, you will not thirst again. You won't have to be thirsty out here looking for things to to to, to please you. Jesus is that living water that he want us to drink so we will never thirst and be longing for sinful things, but rather we will long for godly things and he will satisfy our need. Hallelujah. We have to remember 
to always proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, God Almighty, our Lord and Savior, Lord God. He reigns and only he reigns. We don't reign. The situation don't reign. The problem don't reign. Only God reigns. And, and just like the natural rain, it washes away all the residue and it washes away all the, the impurities. God want to reign in our heart. Jesus want to reign and, 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 and be Lord and Savior over our life so he can take away all the toxic uh, pollution of spiritual things that will cause us to be sick spiritually. And we don't want to be sick spiritually because we can cause other people to, to be sick when we're sick. So God wants us to be whole. And the only way we can be whole is we receive him, Jesus Christ, and give him our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole body, and give it to him all the way. Let our yes be whole, not halfway. Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage you. Um, uh, let's, in closing, we're going to read Isaiah 52, 7. It says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that um, publish peace, that bringeth good tidings of good that publish salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage you. It says in this scripture, I want you to read it for yourself, Isaiah 52, 7. It talks about how blessed is the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. You don't want to bring sick um, tidings and pollution around people. You want to be strong and you want to be vigor. You want to be holy. You want, and the only way you can be holy and we can be holy is to be set apart from worldly things. We have to keep the door closed that the critter would not come in and pollute our mindset, neither pollute our character. Because if that happened, we can pollute others. So Father, have mercy on us. Give us the power. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Remove all the residue of sin, pollution from decisions that was not um, led by you. Father, give us the mindset. Give us wisdom. Give us knowledge. Give us discernment. Father, give us discipline, Father, to be obedient when you tell us to fast in the capacity you tell us, Father, not for shape, form, or fashion, but out of pure love and obedience towards you, God. Bless your people, God, as we bless you today, God, for you are worthy of all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. I just want to say this in closing. Do not let the enemy take your beauty. Do not let the enemy take your sweet fragrance of God. Do not have hidden sin. Repent. I love you. God bless you.